Coach Corey Wayne, and this is my video coaching newsletter. And the topic of this newsletter is going to be from having no dates in over a year to having your choice with women. I've got an email here from a guy who is experiencing just that. He says, Corey, thanks for all you do, man. It's really helped me a ton. I've gone from not having a date for about a year to having a very large choice with women. I used to never get past the first date either. That's all changed. My situation currently is that I'm seeing two girls. I really like both of them. And one of them I've been seeing for about a month and the other I've only gone out with once. The one I had just met, we have that connection you talk about where you could cut the tension or chemistry with a knife. Isn't that, it's just so much better when you feel that way with a girl and she feels the same way. And it's rare and it's special when that happens. But practice makes perfect, and that's why I talk about all the time, repetition is the mother of skills. That's why you get to practice these skills over and over and over and over again. So when you meet somebody and you have that magnetic connection, you get it right instead of fucking it up and blowing your chances. She brings out the kid in me, and I will naturally do the stupidest stuff when I was with her, and she'll do it too. Yeah, you, neither one of you guys are holding back. You're acting like children. That's beautiful. Just like a couple of children. I was actually freaking out after talking... Talking her out, let me see, he says, I was actually freaking out after talking her out the first time because the connection was so strong and I feel like I can do anything around this girl. I was scared to call her and even though I knew she felt it too. So that's, it was a rational fear. It's like when you grow up and you have nothing but never getting past the first date being a problem for you, you don't have much success with women. And so these irrational fears are proven to be very valid because when you look at your life and you look at your history, your thoughts and your reality tend to match. But slowly over time, as you apply the things that I talk about, and you have these little successes here and there, you get past a second date and then a third date and a fourth date, and then you're a month, two months, three months, four months along in a relationship with a girl or dating one particular girl, that slowly what happens is you replace those old irrational fears and limiting beliefs with new, strong beliefs and confidence through experience and being successful. So good for you for doing that. Luckily, the day after she sent the I had a great time text, I used that opportunity to call her up and plan another date. Beautiful. That's textbook. It's perfect. Because basically you did such a great job on the last time you got together, the girl's reaching out to you and wanting to make sure that you know that she had a good time. That's submissive feminine behavior, and that's beautiful. And the reason that she's doing that is, is because, and why you don't do this as a man is because she's being submissive to you. She wants you to know that she had a good time. She wants you to know that she liked you. Why? Because women help you when they like you. They help you seduce them when they like you. And this is the reward for doing everything right and acting like a man is supposed to act around a woman. And so she reaches out to you the next day. Most guys think, oh, yeah, that's great. She's calling me and telling me what a great time she had. And, but the real reason she's doing that is because she's thinking about you and she had a really great time. And she's hoping that in the near future, you'll take the initiative and create and ask her out for your next date. That's the whole reason why she reaches out to you in the first place. But where a lot of guys fumble the fucking football is they sit there and they talk on on the phone for hours. And, and so by the end of the conversation, usually she's the one to leave the conversation. There's, there's, really, she's, there's really no reason for her to be excited about seeing you because you just spent a whole hour, hour and a half on the phone with you. Whereas you did everything right, which is you arranged the date to get together. So good job there. He says here... So she made it very easy for me, and she would basically clear her schedule, but I'm trying to take it with a grain of salt, which brings me to my question. My main question is about the other one. Now, you might say just get rid of her, but I do want to keep seeing her because I really like some things about her as well, and hoping there's a way to open her up. It might be pointless, though, because the connection with the other girl seems so strong. It started off pretty weird and slow and then sped up. This girl is majority old-fashioned when it comes to the physical. It's like, it doesn't matter. When a girl's turned on and she really has a high level of interest, doesn't matter her religious or chastity or celeb uh, cel vows of celibacy. It's like the shit goes right out the window. 
She has a lot of rules, and I'm somewhat okay with that, really. And I'd say you're basically telling me that, Corey, I'm submitting to her rules and going along with her agenda because I hope that'll get me what I want. That's a mistake. She told me the other day that she's not there yet emotionally on the kissing, holding hands, and such. And that tells me that you're chasing this girl. She had given me one of the worst kisses I've ever had and later told me that she really did not want to kiss me, but not because she did not want to, just as she's not ready emotionally for that. It was a weird closed mouth, and it felt like she was trying to push her head through mine. I mean, what that tells me about this girl is she's holding back and she's all mentally in her head. And I've dated women that are like that. They're just not comfortable in their own skin, and they're following a script. They're following rules because somebody told them you shouldn't do this, you shouldn't do that, because you'll be perceived as too easy, too available. And instead, you go out with her, and she's just a fucking terrible first date. I, I remember when I was... I think it was 18. It was right after I graduated high school. And I was at a high school party with you know, one of the guys I went to school with had, had a party at his house. And so I met this girl there. And I wasn't really that into her, but she was cute and she was pretty and she was really digging me. And I remember we, st we sat down on this, on this chair, this like lawn chair, and she sat in my lap. And so I'm rubbing her legs and it's just like fucking, it's like a cat scratching post. She didn't even shave her legs. It's like, how do you go out at a party and it's like not shave your legs? It's like... Come on. And so that was kind of gross and a turn off. But this girl, she couldn't kiss for shit. It's like she stuck her tongue in my mouth. It was like moving around in circles like all over my teeth and stuff. And it was just, it was, she was a fucking, one of the worst kissers I've ever had. Just because she was young and she's inexperienced and she didn't know what the hell she was doing. But, you know, she's all in her head instead of just naturally following what feels good. You know, it's an interesting thing and a great thing to share with chicks about kissing is that when... A human embryo forms and starts dividing. I think it's when it gets to 512 cells, or it's like this little round ball of cells. What happens, the first thing that happens is it starts, when it gets to 512 cells, it starts pulsing and starts beating. And guess what that is? That's your heart. And you know what the very first thing that grows out of your heart is? Because everything in your whole body comes out of your heart. That's what's so amazing. And this is really cool to share with women when you tell them this story. It's like the first thing that grows out of the heart is this little thing that comes up like this. And no, it's not a penis. It's the tongue. And the reason being is that, so when you kiss another human being and you, you French kiss and your tongue is touched, it's, the, it's a direct line to the second oldest thing in your body, which is your tongue. And the first oldest thing, obviously, is your heart. And so literally, it's a direct connection to somebody's heart when you touch their tongue with yours. That's pretty fucking cool. It's like, so let's touch hearts right now. <laughs> so he says, he says, she's given me one of the worst, okay, this is the worst kiss he's ever had. He says, she's not using me for anything. Well, then why did you bring it up? As we'll hang out at her place and she'll cook me stuff. I'm really considering talking telling her that I think her plan is great and pulling any kind of physical intimacy away from her, the stuff she seems fine with, and see if she comes around. What I would do is just, I mean, I wouldn't call her more than once a week. And if the date really sucks, wait two weeks to call her. And if she reaches out to you, then call her and arrange a date for her to come over to your place and, and cook dinner for you at your house. Tell her to bring a bottle of wine and you'll cook dinner for this time. Or tell her you'll get the drinks and have her get bring the food over. The idea is you're, you're chasing this girl too much and you're reaching out to her and you're going along with what she wants and you basically have come submissive to her, what she says she needs and she wants. And she's giving you excuses why she's not kissing you and, and I think what's really going on is that you're acting like a woman. You're becoming submissive and you're thinking, okay, I'll just wait around until she's comfortable and then I'll get what I want. And what's happening is as a man shows up, he's like, you want her, you want to seduce her. That's the whole reason why they're in the first place because you want this girl. And so you show up and you want her and then you're going, okay, well, I'm going to put on the brakes. I'm going to sit down. I'm going to be a good little boy like my mommy taught me to. And I'm going to wait and hopefully someday you'll like me and kiss me passionately. Maybe we'll have sex. It's like a man goes for what he wants. And if he doesn't get what he wants, he goes and spends his time with somebody who will give him what he wants. He says, I stick with your plan with seeing her once a week, and I do not contact her during the week. She's brought this up, being like she wants to talk during the week, and I told her that she can try to contact me if she wants, but I'm not calling her in between dates. 
any advice for opening this girl up or is it pointless? And I would say part of it is the rules that she's got. So the stuff that I teach, it works on normal, healthy women. When you've got a woman who's all in her head and she's got all kinds of weird fucking hang-ups and stuff like that, personally, a guy who's successful with women just is not going to waste the time with a girl like that. And so I personally wouldn't call this girl at all and wait for her to call you. When she does, then set the date. She's like, oh, I haven't heard from you in a while. And that's going to communicate to her because when a woman shows up and she's a good date, the reward is you ask her out for another date. When she's a lousy date, you just simply don't call her anymore and you don't pursue her anymore. Why? Because she sucks. She's not a good kisser. It's like, I mean, think about it. If she's a really lousy kisser, then more than likely she really sucks in bed. I mean, can you imagine getting a blowjob from a girl like this? She'll have no idea what she's doing. So he says, she tends to really fall hard for guys after the physical starts, and she dates a lot of, has dated a lot of jerks that she's got hurt by. And see here, you're rationalizing her behavior away. She told me that she's really into me and that she's like this, though. And what I would say to her is like, baby, just, I don't want you to hold back. Just be yourself with me. Just go with the flow. Just let it happen. Stop trying to resist things. Stop doing whatever you got going on in your mind, thinking that your girlfriend told you to do this, your mom told you to do that. Let's just have fun together and relax and stop worrying about it. And it'll take the tension out of the air. He says, I did let her know that we were just dating and that it's okay for me and her to see other people, and she agreed. Awesome. My advice to you is spend your time with other women that are a lot more fun with, and if this girl reaches out to you when you don't call her anymore, then make a date with her. Why? Because that'll build the sexual tension. It'll make her feel like, oh my God, he hasn't called me. Maybe I've turned him off. Maybe he doesn't like me. Or maybe he got serious with some other girl. And then she'll feel like she's got to do more to get you. Because right now, because you're catering to her needs, you're acting like a pleaser, basically, going along with all of her rules. You're, you've become submissive to what she says she wants. But what all women really want is they want a man who takes control and goes for it. And like I said, in, in this particular case, best thing you do is just walk away and do nothing. And if she calls you, then arrange the next date to get together because that will build more sexual tension and it will put her in a little bit of more fearful place because now she's going to be totally unsure of where she stands with you and she'll take some action to gain some certainty. So, I mean, the bottom line is why do you want to hang out with a girl that's a lousy kisser and who's holding back? And plus, like I said, you've become submissive to her needs and that's why it's really not going anywhere. So if you have a question you want to ask me, or there's a topic you want me to cover in a future video newsletter, go to my website, click the Contact Me tab, which is going to be on the left-hand side of your screen, and send me one to two paragraphs max detailing your questions, your situation, or your challenges. And you just got to give me several days to get back to you with a response because I get a lot of email from the Internet, and I also get a lot of it from my paying phone coaching customers. But be patient, and I will get back to you. And if you want to talk to me right away, the quickest way to get my help is to book a paid phone coaching session. And you can do that by going to my website, click the products tab, which is going to be at the top of your screen, and just follow the instructions. And if you want to get a digital version of my Kindle ebook, on my website, underneath the email sign up box on the right hand side, is a box that has a link to my Amazon Kindle download page. Click the link, go there, make sure you don't have to have a Kindle device to read the Kindle version of my book. All you have to do is download one of Amazon's free Kindle e reader apps. They've got them for pretty much any Android device, any smartphone, any Mac or PC that you may have. So once you download the app, it only takes a matter of seconds to download my book, and you'll be reading it in no time. And I will talk to you soon.